Hi, everyone. Welcome to our chapter-wide meeting uh, for 2023. We're excited to share our strategic plan with you and for you to meet the leadership team. First, we'd like to welcome everybody. Please put your name, your pronouns, your city, your tribal land you reside on, and your favorite hobby or activity in the chat. And an example, I'm Pam Alio. I'm chair of the Bay Area chapter. I'm from, I go by the pronouns she, her, and I live in Danville. And I'm on Bay Miwok land, and I love to hike and be creative. So please share your stories in the chat. We're not going to hold any breakouts until we have uh, we talk about our, our different teams. We're going to have two 15-minute breakouts um, in the second half of the meeting. So we encourage you to stay at that time, and then you can share and meet other people and, and see where, where uh, your skills best fit to, to be able to help in this fight. So the goals for tonight's meeting, introduce the 2023 leadership team and the strategic plan that we all uh, put together and submitted at the end of March. We wanna encourage all of you to volunteer and join a team, find a way to help. Uh, we wanna ignite excitement and a can-do attitude for our communities across the Bay Area. And we wanna gather your ideas. So tonight's agenda, we're gonna start with a welcome and land acknowledgement. Um, we have a short presentation from um, a, a Presidio Graduate School to talk about a tuition discount program available to us. Uh, I have a little section about Climate Reality Bay Area that, that everyone can learn about and about our mission that we have for, for 2023 and a quick overview on the training that just was completed with thousands of, of people uh, trained across the United States. And then we're gonna have a, a longer session to so you can meet uh, the team program and leads. Uh, and then we'll have two breakout sessions where you can um, talk and find out in a little more detail about those sessions. And then we'll close at 7.30. So we're gonna try and stay on time here. I'd like to introduce Alma Sungi Beck, co-chair of our climate justice team, who's gonna lead us in our land acknowledgement. Thank you, Pam. Hello, everyone. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 환영합니다. Welcome. I'll just start with this is a land acknowledgement that was done in conjunction with one of the local indigenous groups, the Association of Rama Tishalone, and their director, Dr. Jonathan Cordero. Um, I live in what's known as San Francisco, the unceded land of the Rama Tishalone. Um, What's important for us, I think, as climate activists is to think about the role of um, land acknowledgements and thinking about the work we do to end the global climate crisis. Indigenous people consist of less than 5% of the world population and yet protect 80% of global biodiversity, according to National Geographic. And um, there was a pamphlet published a couple years ago by called Indigenous Resistance Against Carbon by Oil Chain International and um, Indigenous Environmental Network that discuss the dozens and dozens of campaigns led by indigenous groups around North America that keeps billions of tons of carbon in the ground, equivalent to one quarter of the annual emissions of the US and Canada combined. Um, these are just small examples of the ways that the climate crisis would be much more severe were it not for the efforts of indigenous people. And so it raises the question for us as climate activists, what is our role as settlers, um, if we're not native to this continent, occupiers and guests, on the lands of native, native peoples of the San Francisco Bay Area, what is our role and our place and our connection to the land and to the original people? Um, I think land back is a really important topic for us to think about because land back, I'm convinced, will move us towards ending the global climate crisis as we return land to indigenous people. Uh, many of the practices that actually took land from indigenous people are the same practices that actually caused the global climate crisis. So we get to think about our relationships with um, our own people as well as with indigenous people throughout the Bay Area. And so from this perspective, I offer this acknowledgement of the land and the original peoples of this continent and the San Francisco Bay Area, including the Alone bands of Ramatish, Karkin, Chechenyo, and Tamian, the Coast Miwok, Bay Miwok, and Sierra Miwok, the Pomo, Potkin, Yokut, and Wapo. We are lucky in our chapter to have a robust Indigenous Voices project. Um, we have a couple of big Indigenous Voices speakers programs that we're planning, one on May 31st, one at the end of June. Um, as you know, um, we also have an Indigenous, monthly Indigenous Voices reading group and listening circle. So please feel free to come join us, find our programs on our website, join our climate, climate justice team and support our chapter. Um, thank you all. Kamsamida. 
Great, thank you so much. So this is just a reminder, and if it, for those of you, I don't know if you want to raise your hand who went through the training in April, uh, if you want to raise your hand. Great. Um, so this, this should be very familiar, and I'm not sure if she's on right now, but we have Jamia Adams, who's our Senior Vice President of uh, uh, Climate Reality Project for DEIJ, and she, she led a lot of these discussions during the training. So we just like to go through um, uh, our ground rules for respectful and productive communications. Uh, number one, make space, take space. Number two, speak from your own experience instead of generalizing. Number three, seek to understand by practicing active listening. Number four, embrace productive discomfort. Number five, assume good intentions. Number six, intent does not negate impact. Number seven, disagree without discord. And number eight, accept that there is no quick fix. I think every time I run through these, it just is a good reminder in any, any of your daily life of, of folks that we have that are different from us to, to remember about this. So at this point, I'd like to introduce um, Nelly Avia, who's Director of Admissions for the Presidio Graduate School Tuition Discount Program, and she's going to run through an opportunity available for trained climate reality leaders. Nelly. Hi, Pam. Yes, thanks for the introduction, and thanks for having me um, here tonight. Um, as Pam mentioned, my name is Nelly Avila. I'm the Director of Admissions at Presidio, and I'm excited to share a little bit more about us, um, as well as this wonderful opportunity um, for members of the Climate Reality Leadership Program. Um, but a little bit about us first. Um, our mission is to educate change makers to build a flourishing future for all. And we do this through various different programs that we offer, including a Master's of Business Administration program, a Master of Public Administration, as well as a dual degree that combines both the MBA and the MPA, and several certificate options for those who are interested in taking courses to learn a little bit more about how to drive sustainable solutions. And a few things that make Presidio unique is that we are a graduate school that is first of its kind to focus entirely on sustainability and social justice. And our founders created our curriculum to really integrate sustainability in every course, whether that's finance, accounting, data analytics, you name it. You'll be discussing the implications and applications um, to the field of sustainability, which is um, very unique and has been kind of key to who we are. We're also a high flex program that offers ample flexibility to attend fully online or um, attend our hybrid modality, which is online courses during the week. And then once a month, we have a in-person residency. And lastly, our learning model really focuses on experiential learning that enables our students to get hands-on experience on real-world projects while they're in school and be able to learn from professors who are experts in their fields and practitioners um, across their industries. So as part of the partnership we've established with Climate Reality, anyone who is an affiliate of the Climate Reality Project uh, Leadership Corp will receive a guaranteed 15% off tuition. That is in addition to other scholarship opportunities that we do have to offer in order to make um, an education at Presidio more accessible for those who are um, looking to gain an education with us. So if you are interested in learning more about our programs, um, how it can help you achieve your sustainability career goals. Um, I'm here to offer myself um, as a support system for you. Happy to kind of walk through what program options might be best for you and kind of enrollment timelines. Um, we do have a priority deadline of May 15th that is approaching. That is to start um, this fall where classes begin late August. Um, and a final deadline of June 30th um, for those who might not necessarily be ready to apply by the May 15th, um, that is our final deadline. So again, if you have any questions, would like to learn a little bit more about Presidio, connect with one of our students or attend one of our events, uh, feel free to email me at this uh, contact information that's here and I'm more than happy to support you through that process. And thanks again for having me uh, join you all tonight. Great, thank you so much, Nelly. And I believe this is three years now that we've uh, we've had this relationship with Presidio Graduate School. And I know I met some people that have graduated from the program. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for, for those of us um, that are part of the leadership core. 
Great. Um, so now we're going to kind of go into a little bit about the climate reality in our Bay Area chapter. Uh, so if those of you who, who aren't familiar with just the climate reality project in general, um, our mission is to catalyze a global solution to the climate crisis by making urgent action a necessity across every sector of society. When we double click on this, and this became important to me as chair, I had to sign a charter agreement. And I thought, what is a chapter, right? So this is this is good for all of us to kind of realize the purpose of a chapter is to promote and advance the mission and vision of climate reality within our chapter community. And we can do that in, in the ways that we see is best fit for our own community. Uh, under the guise that we're, we conduct all activities in, in accordance with the law and in alignment with the priorities and values of climate reality and with the highest integrity. So who we are, we're a membership of a blended group of trained climate reality leaders, community act activists and concerned citizens. I think we have about um, half trained leaders and half, uh, half um, uh, community members as a part of our chapter. And we're here to make positive action on climate change and climate justice. We were founded in 2015 and we have a variety of disciplines, cultures, races and generations with over 1500 members. Our Bay Area chapter consists of eight counties. Uh, and if you can see, Santa Clara is the one that is, is not included in ours, and that is the Silicon Valley chapter. So we have everywhere from Marin, Sonoma, Napa, Solano, Contra Costa, Alameda, and San Mateo, and San Francisco. Um, these numbers are a rough estimate of how many are in each county. And at the bottom, if you scan this, it takes you straight to be able to join your local county squad today. We actually very much encourage um, everyone to do this, to get involved locally. Um, that's where we can really make a difference in our local communities. And we'll have this slide posted up too, so you guys can, can um, um, have easy access to this. This is a slide we put together, right? What would, what would Gore do? <laughs> um, this is just a little bit about our corporation, right? We're a 501c3 classification, not a corporation, sorry about that, um, with an educational mission and absolutely no activity or language in support or opposed to a political party or candidate. We can support initiatives though, and legislation. Um, our affiliation is the Climate Reality Bay Area Chapter. And that's what we uh, we espouse to in in all of our efforts that we do in the in the local chapter. And when in doubt, your out your when in doubt, ask yourself what would Al Gore do. And I think that's a great uh, founding grounding for us to really um, look at uh, everything that he says is based in fact. And he waits until he knows um, all of the facts before he includes it in training materials. Our vision, this is something our chapter leadership team reviews every uh, year in the February, January, February timeframe. It's to see the Bay Area and California lead the nation and the world in adopting solutions to climate change and instilling climate justice to build a sustainable, resilient, healthy, safe, and thriving future for all. Lofty goals. So what's our 2023 mission? It's to achieve progress on climate action, climate justice, and climate policy. And we strive to lead the nation and the world in adopting bold and innovative solutions to the climate crisis and be a strong advocate for climate justice. As we hear from our different action teams and, and, and engagement teams, you'll hear what we're doing in these specific areas. So how we'll achieve our mission. We, we lay out goals each year. We're gonna build an inclusive climate community with opportunities for connection and engagement. We're finally out of the pandemic, hooray. And we had a wonderful showing across Earth Day events across the Bay, um, five Earth Day events and tabling opportunities and two uh, cleanup events around the Bay. So this was awesome. Engage, educate, inform and mobilize people, governments and organizations. Influence the adoption of climate and climate justice policies at all levels. Advocate for decarbonizing the built environment and energy infrastructure through electrifications of buildings and transportation. Help to implement and influence Bay Area communities around federal and state climate legislation. Build productive alliances with other climate organizations and establish efficient onboarding and chapter operations to support current and new members. Uh, and, and we'll get into why that's important. There's over 116 chapters in the United States. California is by far the largest, uh, has the largest count. And no surprise here, our chapter is the largest in the United States with over 1500 members in the San Francisco Bay Area. 
So that's one of the reasons why we focus and operations does become a very important part of, of how we can galvanize and excite and come together to, to make a difference. So I wanted to kind of touch a little bit on some of the training of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and Infl Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. And these were from some of the slides that Al Gore sent out um, that this is projected to reduce U.S. emissions by roughly 40% by 2030. And by 2030, we could cut annual emissions equal to taking over 215 million gas-powered vehicles off the road or shuttering 268 coal-fired power plants. I think we need one of the Al Gore visuals with a bomb dropping or something with that one. That's a great one. <laughs> Families could save up to $1,800 in energy costs each year by utilizing programs to switch to electricity. I put a couple of slides in here and I'm not going to run through all of these, but I just wanted to kind of focus because we, our chapter has such a great uh, team that drives our climate justice um, organization and it's, it really leads the world in, in what they're doing to achieve this. And this Inflation Reduction Act has, you know, historic 60 billion for frontline communities. So these slides will be available to you to, to take a look and read through. Um, but they're very significant, including a lot of frontline community efforts to, to the, those who are most impacted. And we certainly have those with Martinez and the oil refineries close by. And, and so we can really take, take to heart and, and, um, and help out the commun local communities around us. So global Im implications, right? The IRA can be a turning point for the U.S. as a global leader on climate. It provides one and a half billion to monitor methane emissions and reduce pipeline leaks. And coming from the world's largest economy, the IRA can help keep the Paris Agreement alive and give other nations the confidence to follow suit. So we have to help fight and get these implemented as soon as possible. Our climate moment from acts to action, how can you, I, I love, there was an email that came out from a, a Climate Reality Project this week, if you went through the training and it was so simple. And I know Wei Tai Kwok is on and Wei Tai said too, it's, it's very simple, right? It's two things, help spread the word and pledge to electrify your life. These QR codes will take you to uh, uh, where you can join the campaign. And the other one will, will help you make the pledge to be able to electrify your home. So feel free to, Take a picture of that. If not, these slides will be available to you and you can easily uh, get to the forms to be able to, to make these um, pledges and help spread the word. And this came out today. There's a welcome webinar. I guess the one that was, um, there's one tonight, but there is one on Saturday. I, I just signed up for this from 10 to 11. That's kind of the first step to doing this, um, our climate moment, acts to action. So if you register today, you can learn how to conduct the campaign and um, get an introduction to the tools that are available. They're um, uh, all on um, the hub. So again, you can uh, scan the QR code and sign up for the webinar on Saturday if you'd like, or um, they will be doing a recording and uh, you can email our climate moment at climatereality.com to view that when that's available. Uh, I think we're doing good on time. So we're we're probably ahead of schedule, team and program introduction. So this is great because what we have such a great full leadership team and there's so many opportunities if you have ideas to do more. Um, we, we really want to see that. We've kind of bucketed them into three areas, action teams, engagement teams, and chapter operations teams. Uh, in the action teams, we have uh, Climate Justice, Pollux the Action, and our county squad leaders, engagement, alliances, and business engagement. Those are two areas you'll hear about. Um, presentations, young adult and youth, uh, climate action. And then our operations team um, is ever expanding and ever in, in need of, of folks to help out around our communications, our events and programming, financial management and member engagement. So what I'm gonna do now is, is we're gonna do a uh, walkthrough of everybody uh, and um, I'm gonna put this off so we can see their faces when they're talking. And we're gonna start with Alma uh, and I believe Siri is on. I'm not sure if Tiffany is on. And they're gonna tell us um, briefly a little bit about the climate justice team. Hello, everyone. Are we spotlighting or not? It's okay if we're not. Um, but if we do, if you could spotlight me and Siri, that'd be awesome. Um, so uh, Siri and I are two of the three climate justice co-chairs. And we have three priorities that we've been working on the last two years. One of them is our Indigenous Voices Project, where we bring speakers and also do readings and think about and learn about more Indigenous voices as it relates to the work we're doing as climate activists. 
Um, we have a project to think about local shoreline environmental justice efforts. These are efforts by envi local environmental justice groups, mostly led by BIPOC folks, Black, Indigenous, and people of color, um, and in shoreline communities around contamination, radioactive and toxic, toxic waste contamination, and impacts of environmental racism. Um, and the third one is um, work that we do. Um, Mary Ruth, who is in the membership chair, she and I have been moderating programs on diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice focused around being allies to different communities around the world, fighting the global climate crisis. Our last one was last year, allies to Africans and other non-USers. We brought three speakers in on Zoom from different parts of the African continent. And we have a program we're working on in July or August um, that is going to be about petro states and people that live in petro states. So if you want to learn more about that, please plan to come. Um, we could very much use your involvement and your interest. If anything around the idea of climate justice and the intersectionality of climate, racial justice, um, and social justice interests you, then come join our team. We meet on a monthly basis. Um, our monthly meeting is actually the, the first Thursday, which is tomorrow. Um, but also you can reach out to me or Siri or Tiffany, our third co-chair. And we could also really use help around communications. We're working with the communications team, but uh, we had a dedicated communications liaison who um, is has left a gap that we are looking to fill. Um, so any interest in communications or social media or writing or just interest in learning more and being part of what we're developing and how we're thinking about climate justice. Thank you. And and just so you guys know, in the breakout room, uh, you can you can meet Alma and Siri and talk a little more. There'll be breakout room number one. Siri, did you want to say anything or? Okay, great. Thank you so much. We we definitely lead in, in climate justice. And uh, I will say Jamia Adams called us out on the Pacific Regional Call last night um, for, for the work that, that um, uh, our, our chapter is doing in Hunter's Point. Um, so that's uh, that's great, great, great. To... So let's go next to policy action. Audrey Heller and Margot Meerman. Hi there. So, um... Last year, uh, well, I, say, I should say 2021 and 2022, our focus was very much on getting the Inflation Reduction Act passed, um, starting off with Build Back Better, started off as Build Back Better. So we worked really hard. We held a lot of meetings with local um, Bay Area congressional representatives and our, our two U.S. senators. Um, that was passed. Uh, this year, 2023, we've had two main campaigns. Um, the Farm Bill is happening this year at the national level. Um, so we've been um, partnering with 350 Bay Area Action to have meetings with our local representatives. Um, 350 Bay Area Action talks about um, a number of different climate issues, but we in those meetings have focused on regenerative agriculture in the Farm Bill. Shout out to Perry Kaler, um, who, uh, who's on this call and has been doing a great um, amount of work there. Um, so the Farm Bill has been one of our focuses. Um, another focus has been working with our climate justice team um, uh, with uh, residents of Bayview Hunters Point um, with their concerns around the Naval Shipyard there um, and um, a, you know, a result of uh, climate change, which will be sea level rise and what's going on there. We had a really productive meeting last week with Senator Padilla's office. Um, and so um, we plan to have another meeting soon with Nancy Pelosi's office around that. Um, so we're happy to be working with the climate justice team to support um, residents of Bayview Hunters Point. Um, we are not at this time working a lot on state level uh, work. Um, we've got some other partner organizations who are doing uh, great work there, Climate Action California. Um, and uh, then um, under the policy action, of course, is local uh, um, action with our squads. Um, and with this year, of course, a focus on building electrification, um, uh, following up with some of the work that was done last year. Um, so that's an overview. And um, we uh, kind of take our, uh, I need to stop talking because I'll go on too long. <laughs> Audrey, what do you need? What, what well, would you bring? I, I would just say that um, one of our main activities is um, organizing and participating in these meetings with members of Congress and um, and our uh, Senate offices. And those are uh, 
We really welcome participants in those. It's become very easy to, to do that because a lot of most of those meetings are over Zoom. And so if you're interested at all in sort of getting uh, that insight into the workings of, uh, of legislation, we really welcome you um, joining our those meetings, even if you can't participate fully in our, in our team. Um, it's really exciting. It's uh, very, once you've sort of dipped your toe in, it all becomes very human scale. And it's a very interesting view of sort of how, you know, the, 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 the impact that we can make as individuals uh, at, the, um, at the policy level. So we look forward to um, having some new folks. Great. And I will say that uh, Margo and Audrey worked on a blog last year that um, highlighted their efforts of doing this right for the first time. And, it, and uh, you know, I think we'll we'll try to resurface that blog because it was a great, you know, they rolled up their sleeves and figured it out. And I don't think, you know, it's like, don't be intimidated. They kind of helped to figure it out and they can help guide you on, on how they did it. Um, so I think that's that's great. Thank you so much. Um, now, co county squad leaders, we're going to have uh, Bonnie Hamilton talk about the, the county squads in particular and what they focus on. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here this evening. Uh, glad that you came and showed up. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, give a shout out to some of the other squad leaders that are in the house. And uh, that's, I saw Robin Muller and Kathy Goforth. So uh, I, I might've missed someone, but uh, uh, if there's anyone else, uh, just put it in the chat. I, I'd appreciate it. Um, I've been the squad leader in Solano County for about five years now. Honestly, I trained in 2017 and then became a squad leader when the, at the very first uh, squad leader um, uh, uh, the, when they established the squad. So I've been around for a while. Um, you know, it, traditionally, the squads have been working on uh, electrification, like as said, uh, uh, around uh, local government reach codes, mostly asking for no gas infrastructure and new construction and other electrification efforts uh, have included advocating for EV fleets and uh, infrastructure and uh, moving towards uh, community choice energy providers in cities that don't have them. Some cities in the Bay Area have them and some don't still. And we're working here in Solano County to do that. Other efforts have been uh, specific to geographic region. Here in Solano County, we're a, a fairly big ag county. So we uh, work uh, with uh, agriculture as well as sea level rise. Um, and we work with other groups such as the Sierra Club, Sustainable mm -hmm. Solano, and 350 Bay Area. Um, and uh, finally, if you don't already uh, belong to your county squad, go to our website at uh, climaterealitybayarea.org under get involved and go down to your action teams and uh, you'll be able to email your the squad leader uh, of your county and uh, ask to be uh, connected. So again, thank you for being here this evening. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, I don't know if any of the other squad leaders want to speak briefly on anything that they're doing that's that's different than kind of what Bonnie outlined, because I know a lot of them have been focused on building electrification. And I will say, and Wei Tai Kwok got me involved in Contra Costa right after I trained to just do a letter, right? And it's getting involved in local participation matters uh, with your local governments. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. So next is alliances and business engagement. And I'll ask Harriet to speak a little bit about these. They're open positions that, that we've had filled in the past and opportunities that will exist for somebody new who wants to volunteer. All right, I guess I'm unmuted now. Wonderful to see everyone tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a really exciting moment uh, for climate action with all the wonderful things that happened last year with legislation and uh, the recent mobilization of thousands of people across the country um, uh, as climate reality leaders to, to take action. So exciting, glad you're here. Um, I uh, uh, am kind of filling in here to talk a little bit about two groups that currently do not have uh, specific leadership um, in the chapter, but uh, create opportunities for people to, if you are interested in a leadership kind of role or 
uh, just coming in and starting to, to do some things and maybe get a few people involved or even get involved yourself uh, as an individual to, to bring ideas and opportunities and um, gumption to our work. So alliances, uh, we all know how many climate organizations are. There, there are hundreds of them. And I know a bunch of us are members of more than one. Um, and, you know, there's no reason for all of us to be reinventing the wheel. So there are opportunities to collaborate between organizations. A lot of times we have very similar missions, but we can bring more people together by uh, combining with another group and, and taking action. Uh, and then there are also complementary things that, that we do where we can amplify each other's work. So it's an actually, you know, and it's really exciting thing to be involved in. Uh, we have had an alliances effort for the last two years within the chapter. So there is some leadership and a little bit of um, some work that has been done there. Um, so anyway, I'm happy to talk with anyone uh, that might be interested in just uh, sharing ideas and learning more about what we've done in the past and what the opportunities might be there. I'll be in room six. Um, so please join me there. Business engagement, uh, another group that actually we've had a business engagement group within the chapter for, uh, I think, at least three or four years, maybe 2018 might have been the first year. And of course, here we are in the San Francisco Bay Area with with just all the uh, different types of businesses and um, just a robust business environment and plenty of opportunity uh, for us to try to influence them towards SDG goals and, you know, electrification, all the things that we stand for. So um, there's a lot of opportunity there. Our business engagement efforts have taken several different forms throughout the years. Um, you know, our, our first group that did it largely put together socials and networking opportunities. And, you know, out of those opportunities come action. So that's, you know, one model. And we've had uh, different models for uh, trying to engage the business and community. So, um, oh, and I also should mention too that the Climate Reality Project on the Reality Hub, which um, most, I hope people will um, join if you haven't already, the Climate Reality Bay Area Chapters group on the Reality Hub. There is a group called the Business Working Group that is very um, determined to engage the business community in climate presentations. So there are a lot of different ways to engage here and I'm happy to share ideas and, and hear what you might be interested in doing again, room six. So hope to see uh, some of you there. Great, thank you very much. Um, so presentations, we're gonna go back to Bonnie Hamilton who's leading our presentations team. Hi again, everyone. Um, so uh, if our presentations team uh, works to connect uh, people who request presentations from the Climate Reality uh, Bay Area uh, and connect them with our seasoned uh, climate reality leaders who have been trained by Mr. Gore and uh, to give presentations. So that's one role of the presentations team. Another role is to support those uh, trained climate reality leaders in giving presentations. So um, if anyone needs that kind of support, I'm, I'm willing personally to, to help folks. So uh, please reach out if that's the case. Also, just want you to know that we are planning a um, presentations boot camp on June, uh, Saturday, June 24th, and we will have our rock star mentors uh, uh, helping to um, uh, facilitate that. That would be uh, Wei Tai Kwok and Gary White, who actually even gave um, uh, presentations um, a skill building issue at the recent Power Up training that we had um, in April. And, I'll, uh, you know, we'll be working to bring the, the messages out to other groups and also identifying groups that could benefit from the presentation. So uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Anyone who's interested in being involved, please reach out. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Bonnie. Don't know if Alice Sung or Josh Mordant is, are on for Young Adult and, and the Youth Climate Action Team. Was Alice able to join? 
I don't see them here. Okay. Okay. Um, and that is one too. We actually had a, you know, a young adult uh, group and um, the uh, chairperson had to step down. Alice has, is a mentor uh, and Josh is a high school student and they are um, driving a, 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 probably in the June timeframe, an event around um, climate education in schools. Um, so that'll be climate curriculum. So that'll be very interesting. So there's a lot of opportunity and I know that they always are looking for more young people to join that team and get ideas. There's a lot of other alliances that exist, um, around, uh, the Bay area that are, that are highlighting, um, youth. So, uh, if you're interested in that, um, there will be a room for, if not, you can come to the general Q and A session and we can, we can talk more about that, um, there. We probably will shut down that one room, but we'll put those rooms up. Well, so now we're going to move on to the chapter operations teams. And, um, we have a, uh, slide. I introduce, uh, communications leader, um, Alakoka Kailahi. And let me share the slides here. Amazing. Okay, probably just the one next over. Okay, well, hello everyone. Um, as you shared, I'm Alakoka, communications chair. And as you can clearly tell by this presentation alone in this event, there's a lot of information to take in. Mm -hmm. So basically our communications team, it's our job to send out all the information that would be helpful and to push initiatives and invite others to events and to show up in different places to support different propositions or climate justice related items. Items. Um, but basically, the communications team, our purpose is to drive awareness in the Bay Area community and provide opportunities uh, locally and independently. Um, in addition to that, we provide this information from a variety of platforms, social media, email, website, just so our members, like everyone here, can easily reference, digest, and or get involved uh, when they want. The next slide, please. Um, additionally, with our strategy, uh, several years ago, I'd say probably four years ago, it was probably one person managing the communications. We now have a large group of members, but not enough. And we're hoping that you can help us contribute to the strategy that we have listed here, which is educating others with great content and policy action, um, encourage action, like I said, mentioned earlier, and really sharing stories through podcasts and blogs. Um, and this also relates to presentations, really connecting uh, with one's story as well with the story in your community, county, and the Bay Area. Um, additionally, expand social media reach. And that is to get the word out once again, uh, but to get more people outside of the Bay Area involved in our initiatives um, as well to push it even further. Uh, next slide. And here's just a visual caption of what we do. Um, on our left, we have our current website. Uh, we design different images and content that we get from the existing chapter teams so that we can launch it out to our existing members. Additionally, the second image, we have our newsletter. This is our monthly newsletter that's sent out and you guys all receive it with content. Uh, contact information and events that you can put on your calendar and attend, as well as educational posts like the ones here, uh, to how to promote sustainability by deleting emails, things in that manner on LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Instagram, and Facebook, both private and publicly. Uh, next, we have our Everyday Climate Champions. Uh, for example, we had one member that was really interested in making a podcast several years ago. And she did. Uh, they, we are now on episode eight. Dahlia is amazing. She's on this call. Shout out to you. Um, and what's cool about the communications team is if a member has a vision about how to promote something or really connect uh, to a specific group of people uh, that we may not be reaching out to, then we can provide an opportunity like a podcast where people can reference instead of reading. They can listen. Um, so that's just one fun example. Next, this is just our uh, layout for our team. So because there's so much to capture and share, we split up in four teams, the newsletter team, website team, social media team, and podcast team. So you can pretty much tell what each team is dedicated towards. 
And although we do have great, amazing and creative individuals, we do need more um, in order for us to continue to match the amount of expansion that our Bay Area chapter has. Um, being the largest membership in the U.S., there is lots to do, but it's lots of opportunity to get creative and have fun with it. Um, so these are just a couple of our volunteer opportunities and titles are flexible, but there is way more opportunity than that what's listed there. And I look forward to speaking on that in the breakout room. Great. Thank you very much, Alakoka. And there'll Thank be you. a breakout room five, but we'll post that up uh, in a minute. Um, let's go to the events and uh, programming teams and Sue, who is hosting our event tonight and Kevin Morrison. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to this meeting. Um, so I'm Sue and I uh, am a co-chair of the events team. Um, people often find out about our chapter by first coming to one of our events. And so our committee makes all of those events happen. Um, if you're a person who really likes to meet new people, um, if you like to organize things and make things happen, um, maybe you're comfortable hosting Zoom events like this one today. Um, we've got plenty of um, um, educational events. We've had wonderful speaker events on Zoom. And we are starting to organize some in-person events, too. We had one um, recently at the Gilman Brewery, which was really fun. Um, and so this, you know, this would be a great team for you if you um, are a person who is organized and really likes to make things happen. Um, so we'd love to have you come join us and um, um help us out. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Sue. And this is this is a much needed role, especially as we've come out of the pandemic. We just started doing in-person events. We had an art and climate event in um, uh, April that uh, Audrey Heller and, and Harriet helped to really organize and, and pull off, and it was very successful. So we know that there's a big appetite for that. And um, a lot of ideas out there. We need people that can also roll up their sleeves and make it happen because um, engaging with people uh, in person, there's just such a different vibe. And then the Zoom is Zoom allows us to go far too with a far reach around the Bay Area and beyond. Um, so both both aspects are very important as we as we build out that team. Thank you, Sue. Okay, so next I want to go to um, it, uh, Mary, uh, Mary Ruth Gross before she leaves, and then Harriet, you can talk a little bit about financial management just because Mary Ruth has to leave. So Mary Ruth runs our member engagement team. Is she still on? Yes, there she is. Good. Thank you. Unmute myself. Okay. Hi. Um, most of you have already gotten a letter from me um, welcoming you to the uh, the chapter. But that isn't the end of uh, the member engagement. Um, what we do, Harry has been so extremely helpful in the next phase of that, which is actually connecting with the new members to find out what where your interests are. There are so many different ways to be involved in uh, Climate Reality Bay Area. For the, and whatever your interests are and, what, and your, your skills and matching, there's a place for you here. And so member engagement, I, I, do, need, I do need people to help with this, uh, is to um, really talk and really listen actually to new members and find out where, where do they wanna plug in? What do they wanna do? What do they find fun and interesting? And help people figure out the way into the, the chapter. Once, once you get to a committee or you know, a squad or a team, Everybody here is so welcoming and willing to help you and willing to, if you need training for things, if you, whatever you need to be, um, to have a good experience and to be effective and help us, help all of us be effective in uh, figuring out this whole climate change thing. Uh, and I'm sorry, I have to leave. I have to go share a different meeting, but um, really have fun and have a, have a good time with your chosen uh, uh, team tonight. Great, thank you, Mary Ruth. 
So now, Harriet, uh, close us out with financial management and some of the, the efforts you're doing. And just so you guys know, Harriet and Bonnie were both our uh, chairs um, last year, and Harriet held the role for two years. So um, we thank her for her continued um, efforts in this area, and we, we definitely rely on both of them a lot. Harriet. Absolutely. My pleasure. It's been, um, I, I love this community. It's a fun bunch of people, just amazingly smart and wonderful to be involved with. So everything I have been able to do with this chapter has been a privilege and just a lot of fun. So I highly endorse involvement. Um, so I won't belabor everybody too much with uh, information about our uh, treasurer um, or our fundraising. Um, we have just a a modest fundraising account, Climate Reality Project, um, allows us to raise funds uh, in a tax deductible way, which is a, a nice thing. They hold an account for us at headquarters, and then we are able to draw on it again. All those funds, though, come from donations, so we welcome those. We do. Um, you've seen all the amazing things that we do in the communications and the, uh, in the events realm, and um, those things do require some funding. So we, we run Lean and Mean. We are an all-volunteer organization, and we, we don't have any administrative overhead. So every uh, penny that gets donated goes to our important work engaging um, the Bay Area in climate progress and climate justice. So if, if but if anybody here is kind of a financial person or a person that really loves to do fundraising, join me in room six. And I'd love to just uh, hear what you're interested in. Uh, but I do want to put a plug in for our current fundraising campaign. Uh, the first one we've done in uh, about, I think, two or three years, uh, the 30 for 2030, $30 for 2030 campaign. If you haven't donated already, uh, any amount is welcome. We uh, just really encourage participation so we can continue to do all the great things that we're doing for the Bay Area community. Um, and I, I'm going to go rogue here. Mary Ruth had to leave. And so, Pam, unless you have another plan for people that want to join a breakout to talk about member engagement, yeah, I would be happy to have them in room six with me if uh, that's an offer. That would that would be great. Um, okay. As we're as we're putting up, so um, and now we kind of move into the breakout sessions, and Sue's going to help uh, explain a little bit how this is going to work. Um, it kind of goes in the order that we had people doing. Uh, the first breakout room is climate justice. Second is policy action, and the county squad leaders together. Great. Welcome back, everybody. We're on track here. Wow, 725. Um, we're doing good. So this is just you know, ways to learn more about our chapter. Um, email is climaterealitybayarea at gmail.com. And um, I spoke with uh, Kim Winkler about this. If you have some idea, you know, you can you can start something. And that's that's a great way to kind of start things. Uh, there was a, a, an event, sustainability event up in Santa Rosa, like somebody hears about it. That's the way we can get the information flowing. So um, as well as our website and everything uh, that we talk about. So you can snap a picture of this. And this is just a plug. If you heard about it through the training, the Climate Action Now app, you can um, look at that QR code, point your phone at it and download that CAN app and you can take five actions a day. Um, and we actually have some chapter members who are helping to upload some of the educational facts in that. And it's a way to, to get your voice heard locally uh, and and inter and state and federal. Um, so it's a great, great app if you don't know about that one. Uh, let me see here. Okay, the voice, the vote, the choices. We want to inspire others to act this year at home, work, or school, in your communities, through local, state, and federal legislation, always with passion and conviction, knowledge and fact, compassion and understanding, a sense of urgency and solutions and creativity and always hope. Um, we love the term be inconvenient. So upcoming events and meetings, um, you can go to our events page. These are just some highlights of what's going on this month, right? We talked about the monthly climate justice meeting that's happening tomorrow. There's a Contra Costa Policy Action Squad meeting. I believe it's tomorrow. It, it may be pushed off until the 18th, but it's still listed on our website. Um, Marin Sonoma County EV Squad meeting. And uh, all of these are, are great events to go. May 27th, we have a Saturday Bay Cleanup in San Leandro. May 31st, we have an event um, that was uh, 
Alma mentioned about this land back in climate justice in Marin County, about the Bay, Bay Miwok Indians, or, excuse me, Indians, Native Americans. I came from Arizona. We still say Indian reservation, sorry. And I learned from one of the climate justice sessions that it's okay to say Indians, they aren't offended by it. But anyway, June 24, save the date, presentations boot camp. And don't be afraid to get involved. Jump right in. Um, it's a great group. Uh, we have uh, a, a great group around our community and lots of ways to roll up your sleeves. We're going to be having more in-person events. Um, and we certainly will still have our Zoom events because they let, let folks get involved uh, with everything that we do. And that's it for the Climate Reality Bay Area chapter. So thank you very much for attending. And send us your questions. Uh, we hope to see you on more calls in the future. And we definitely want to hear everyone's ideas uh, about what they have and how they'd like to help in this effort, um, because there is hope. Thank you.